In the dream, the house is very dark, but I could see the faces in the house. And there was a large black bat that was darker than the dark in the house. And the bat would circle around, circle around, and then it would drop down and hit me in the side real hard. And I would look for it, would try to catch it, try to do something, and then it would circle around, circle around again, and then drop down real hard. So as I was standing there, I woke up and as I was standing there, the Lord said there are people in the house experiencing great darkness. And the enemy, he said, it's, it's like a dark tormenting spirit that's, that's vexing, that's dropping down, afflicting. And the Lord wants us to know today that that battle, even that's coming against Bethel, is a dark spirit, a vexing spirit. It's a frustrating spirit. And so right now, I want us to begin to intercede two minutes against a spirit of darkness, against a spirit of frustration, against our house, <laughs> Bethel, our natural house, against your house, because I saw Sister Robin in the dream, clear as day. I saw a co-worker in the dream, clear as day. And so there are spirits, there are those of us individually and corporately that might be experiencing that frustrating spirit. So I want us to begin to pray like never before. Right now, let me change the music, my brother. Just get us something fresh. You do website music. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, I'm talking about these are prayer warriors. Because that was serious. God, we thank you that right now, in the name of Jesus, if you're watching by Ustream, begin to pray like never before. Father, we come together as one people, Lord God. And we put our prayers together, mighty God, against now as we're covered in the blood. Come on, we cover ourselves in the blood fresh. And God, every demon spirit, every spirit of darkness, Yeah, they can't roll. 
take authority over every foul spirit of darkness. We command them in the name of Jesus. Every unclean spirit, every spirit of darkness, we command you in the name of Jesus. The Son of God, we command you to lead the lives of these your God's people. We command you to take your hands off of this house. verse 1 which is really a continuation from chapter 5 you may go there just now let the spirit do that today Romans 6 and 1 says shall we con- shall we shall we say then what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And when we look at this word, abound, it comes from a Greek word that means to do or to make or to be more or to increase. Now, we're talking about the abounding grace of God. And when we talk about grace, it comes from this Greek word charis. I may have perhaps said it funny, but it means God's graciousness. And many times when we read grace, even from the perspective 
perspective of the biblical definition, it is many times associated with the word free. Grace being a free gift, an expression of God's graciousness or his kindness. And this statement in Romans 6 and 1 is, is bleeded over from Romans 5. Where we get the story, and you can go back there briefly, and I'll just touch a few verses. Where we find out about the origin of sin in the world. Where it says things such as, in Romans 5 verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so that death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So what that scripture is saying to us is that by the sin of one man, death entered into the world, that same death came upon all men, and as a result of that, all men have been labeled as a sinner. As a result of one man's sin. So if you want to know why the scripture says we are born in sin, shaping in iniquity, it is because Adam sinned. And as a result, God caused death to come upon every man and every man from that point including woman has been labeled as a sinner now some people will look at that and say well that is unfair how and why would God allow death to come upon my life because of what somebody else has done but we have to understand that Adam is a type of Christ because, and this is the power and the goodness of God, if you will allow us to all be killed because somebody sinned, well, why not also, because you're so good, gracious, and kind, allow somebody to walk in righteousness, and I'll take their righteousness and put it all on you. That's the abounding grace of God. Where sin abounded, where death reigned, the abounding grace of God is manifested in the earth, having sent his only begotten son, so that through his righteousness and him being made sin for us, we are now the righteousness of God. So no matter how much sin is in the world, there is an abounding grace grace from God to save every single man, woman, and child through what God has manifested for us through Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 5 verse 14, it says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's Death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over everyone who did not also, like Adam did, eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We did not do the similitude of Adam's transgression. Death reigned upon us because of what he did. But then it gives us this beautiful verse. It says, who, Adam, being a figure of him that which is to come. God allowed that to happen like that because he is a prophetic revelation of another one who is coming. A last Adam in the sense. And so we get the, the comparisons in the next few verses. Skip down to verse 19. It says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, Adam being a type of Christ, so by one man's obedience, the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. See, aren't you glad he punishes all the Adam? 
Because now he can save us all through Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Thank you for punishing us as all through Adam. Because now you can save us all through Christ. Give me the praise. Verse 18 says, Therefore, by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. But even so, by the righteousness, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Justified, declared righteous. By one. So where sin abounded and destroyed the world, think about it, one man's sin turned into sin on everybody. One man's sin turned to sin on everybody and death on everybody. That's abound. But where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. So I said, so God says, I'll send my one son, Jesus, and through his righteousness, however much sin abounded, grace got much more abound. And I'll make, I'll make many righteous and justified through the righteousness of one. Sin abounded. Grace did much more
John 3, 16. I'm going somewhere with this. Watch this. And then from there, we'll go to Colossians 1. He says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son. Some people may read that verse and wonder what does that mean? Are we talking about because you know, he was the only one immaculately concepted in the womb of a virgin? This verse far exceeds what happened with Mary. This verse is revealing something to us about who Jesus is that's before angels. I would even dare to say, and will say it, even before the Holy Ghost. See, when I study the Word, I like things to be clear. I like things to be precise. I don't want, I don't want ambiguity about it all. I want to know how it all started, in what order, and how God did it all. Now, you may go to Colossians chapter 2. Chapter 1, verse 12. You may go to a, the a theology school and they will teach you Jehovah, Yahweh, concerning God, meaning self existent and eternal. That is true concerning God. But John 3.16 tells me that there was a day when Jesus was begotten. God is Yahweh. God is Jehovah. God is self-existent. God is eternal. There was no beginning. There is no end. There are certain attributes that are attributed to Christ when you read Ephesians, the book of Hebrews, when they're teaching on Melchizedek and they say uh, something along the lines of and Melchizedek is made like unto the Son of God because he has no beginning of days and no end of life. And we know that those, attribute, those attributes were attributed to Melchizedek. Not that Melchizedek is eternal. Let me go ahead and say that because I've been in Bible classes where people have asked questions. Well, is Melchizedek eternal? No. The scripture said he is made like. Those attributes are attributed to him to reveal to us the eternal nature of the priesthood of Christ. Priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So when we talk about Jesus, the only begotten of the Father, there was a day when he was born. And I want to make a distinction here between born and created. Are you, are you still with me today? Yeah, yeah. We're still talking about grace. Yeah, yeah. I want somewhere with this. Go to Colossians 1. Now, how many of you believe the scripture that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son? Yeah. That means that there was a day when he was born. Do you believe that? Yeah. Again, you can go to such and such as Bible school and academy and they're going to tell you Jesus existed forever. And he is eternally equal with God and the Holy Spirit. But that's contrary to scripture because Jesus himself said the Father is greater than me. I mean, you know that's in your Bible. Have you ever read it in your Bible? Raise your hand if you've seen that scripture in your Bible. Okay, we know that. 
least one or two witnesses. Jesus said himself, the Father is greater than me. Now, we do have to understand that the Bible also says concerning Jesus, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus is a perfect, not only a revelation of the Father, but really the express image of the Father. He is like God's twin in God form. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That verse of Scripture. Go ahead and do Colossians. I'm still going somewhere with this. Let's do Colossians. Come on. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. See, you got to let your, your Bible be your guide and your teaching. I've learned a long time ago, and let me tell you something. Sometimes you may feel uncomfortable when you read some scriptures. Because Dr. So and so said it was this. Theological leader said that it was that. Read your Bible for yourself. And what the Word of God says, that is. I'm letting you see these scriptures with your own eyes. So that you will know that these are not my opinions. I'm not coming to you presenting to you something new. I'm presenting you something that's always been in your body. <laughs> and you need to believe the word. Here's your verse to help free your mind. Let God be true in what? Oh, yeah. Every man a liar. Well, that's a verse of scripture in your Bible. Let God be true and every man a liar. So here we are, and this is that verse in Philippians, I'm about to read Colossians, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now when you say form of God, equal with God, you're talking about in every way. Jesus in God form is the mighty God. And he is a perfect revelation of the everlasting Father. So when you hear Jesus, you hear God. Jesus in God form is equal with God. But yet God is greater than he is. Jesus himself prays to God. Just to give you context. Colossians 1 and 12. 
will says, Thanks unto the Father. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet or able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So we've got light, and we're saints, and we have an inheritance. How many of you have ever read about your inheritance? Amen. I, mean, oh, I got another rabbit trail. Go to Isaiah 53. I want to show it to you. I hope you, I know you ain't have Bible. We don't do Bible studies on Wednesday. Today is Bible study. Isaiah 53. And we're going to jump back to Colossians. You need to know who you are today. And what, what God has for you. Isaiah 53 verse 10. I'm going to get you out of here now. Who wants to with this? I'm going to wrap it up in seconds. Watch this. Isaiah 53 and 10. You there? Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. We're talking about Jesus. He had put him to grief. Thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Next verse. He shall see his seed. So we know that the offering for sin is the seed of God. After he makes his soul an offering for sin, the next verse. He shall prolong his days. That's the resurrection. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul. That's your Jehovah, your Jehovah, the Lord sees. What was that in the context of the sacrifice being offered? Jehovah Jireh does not mean provider. It's your Hebrew uh, concordance out and look at it. It means Jehovah sees. And in fact, the scripture actually defines it because it says, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So not only does the Bible define it, but if you go back to the Hebrew word, it defines it. It means Jehovah sees. And it's being confirmed here. He shall, he shall see the travail of his soul. We're talking about that acceptable sacrifice, that acceptable sin offering. He shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. And here's the gospel. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify me. That's why we preach. People are justified by knowledge. His knowledge. The knowledge of him. For he shall bear their iniquities. Now this is your inheritance. You ready for this? I'm talking about grace still. Again, it's more than just, oh, you're righteous. It's more than just, you're the righteousness of God. Look at this verse. Therefore will I divide him, Jesus, a portion with the great. Who is the great? God. A portion is going to be divided with the great. It's going to be divided unto him. Who? The son who made his soul an offering for sin. He is divided a portion with the great. Now watch this. God is the great one. And he, the one who got a portion from the grave, turns around and shall divide the spoil of all that he received from the great one with the strong. Who are the strong? You that overcome. You who take the power of the Holy Ghost and walk in righteousness and overcome sin. That's who the strong is. He gonna get a portion from the grave. And he's going to take all of that spoil he gets and turn around and say, I'm going to give some of this to the strong. Now can you imagine? Have you seen the extravagance of God? Have you read your Bibles? See, the little wealth in this world is pennies. I do a portion with the great. I'll tell you how 
rich God is. God is so rich that if you want it, won't he just make it? <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? God is so rich that if he wanted more, he'd just make it. <laughs> hey. The whole planet for himself. Come out of the earth. The city of God that he has made. God 
body of Christ. That's that relationship right there. And Jesus is the only one who's come directly from the Father. The only one. Oh, this is some heavy stuff right here. The only one. Now you might say, well, what is we what did we come in place? What we what we come in play at? You read your Bibles, you're born of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right. <laughs> you read it. And we're gonna get into that in a little second. Look at this. You the firstborn, he is the firstborn, he is the image of the invisible God. God created his twin, essentially. We read other scriptures in the form of God, thought not robbery to be equal with God. We read in Isaiah where it talks about he is the mighty God and the everlasting Father. So there is a, a, a manifestation of Jesus that is just as strong as God.
But I'm showing you your Bible today. And it's going to destroy every myth, everything you ever heard that was taught to you that was wrong. For by him, Jesus, the one who was God's express image, Jesus being the firstborn and only begotten. By him all things were created that are in heaven. Is the Holy Spirit in heaven? Is the Holy Spirit in heaven? Yeah, he is. He said last prayer before the throne. Is he also in earth? Yeah, his presence fills heaven and earth. He created all things in heaven and that are in earth visible and just in case you was doubting and didn't understand what I was talking about. Invisible too. Jesus created by God. It's all that invisible stuff. He making his angel spirits, ministers of the name of God. The Holy Ghost, the seven lamps burning before the throne. Let me tell you how deep God is. God is so deep that really we cannot look at Jesus because now Jesus is working. But God is deep because he got Jesus got God's wisdom. Jesus, by God, and God and Jesus, Jesus is so deep that he creates God. And you know the Holy Spirit is a how do I say it like this? A lowercase G-O-G God, but is a God because he is he's the Father. You ever read your Bible? It says in the beginning, what? Elohim, right? I mean you looked at the Hebrew word for gods. God uh, in, in, in uh, Genesis. In the beginning, Elohim. I got witnesses, right? Come on, at least one or two. Come on. We can study it in the Hebrew too, right? In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. They get to man and they say, let us. So we got gods, God in the plural. So we got some gods created. The Bible is very clear that God created all things by Jesus Christ, so we know that even when he was creating this world, Jesus was there, even though he's not mentioned in Genesis. He's the Word. The Holy Spirit is there because we see him clearly. He is hovering over the face of the water. He's doing and manifesting the Word. And then we got God the Father there, who is mentioned by name, God in no God the Father is there. So when we look at Elohim, we now understand and see that when we talk about the creation, we're talking about a species of gods creating things. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is so deep, according to this verse in Colossians, that he even has the ability to create gods. Come on, man. Come on, man.
actually goes through the revelation of Elohim and God saying, let us. We understand here that the Holy Ghost is also of the God species. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Holy Ghost is also the God species. We're talking about different heavenly species. You got seraphim, cherubims, locusts, frogs, all kinds of spiritual beings in heaven. The latter two you can find in the book of Revelation, spiritual beings. Living creatures on and on. This is what you have to understand about that. The Bible says concerning the Holy Ghost, when he came to man, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. When God breathes into man's nostrils, really, through the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord is making the breath of the Almighty is giving me life. When he breathed into his nostrils, because the Holy Ghost is manifesting in all of this. When he breathed into his nostrils, the spirit of man came out in the Holy Ghost, into that man. This is what you have to understand about the Holy Ghost. When God gives his breath, your new man came out of the Holy Ghost, right? Is born in flesh, flesh, that which is born of the what? Spirit of spirit. The Holy Ghost is the one who gives the breath. Now watch this. When the Spirit of God came to the fish, the dog, the dinosaur, the elephant, the turtle, the crocodile. All of these out of the same Holy Ghost receive breath. And out of that same spirit, a specific breath for that specific species came out of the same spirit. Did you hear what I just said? When God was getting ready to destroy everything in the book of Genesis, he said, I'm going to destroy everything in whose nostrils is the breath of life. What is he talking about? Spirit. Solomon himself mentions the spirit of man versus the spirit of beast. So what am I telling you? Out of, see, what do you have to understand about the God species? The God species has the power to create. The God species. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So he... The Holy Ghost comes to the dog and breathes into his nostrils a certain He looks at the turtle and breathes into his nostrils a certain type of other creation. We're talking about the creator now, right? He, I mean, you know he's a creator. Okay. He comes to man and creates and breathes into his nostrils the creation of a man. Breath in all of the creation, they all you 
uniquely received a breath according to what he created them to be in spirit. And if you don't believe that there are different species in the realm of the spirit, all you got to do is look in the realm of the spirit and see a bunch of different species. And like the natural things show us the spiritual things. I know I'm messing up today. You still with me? Jesus get a portion of the grace. 
the grace turned around and give it to the the the, the son turns around and share that same portion with the squirrel. Lord, I give you the praise. I think this is worth worshiping God for. Because not only has he delivered us from darkness and bad to the spirit today. <laughs> the intercession of the church. You just learned today that God has made you through Christ Jesus a God. My God. Seated in heavenly places. Oh, wait, wait, we got to know what he done for us. I talk about graciousness. You know, if God just esteemed us as righteousness and saved us from death, that would have been but God threw on us some serious extravagance. He threw some serious extravagance. That's what I'm talking about when I say abounding grace. When I talk about abounding grace, it's like, man, you just went overboard. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You didn't just make us, you didn't just justify us and make us righteous. You decided, oh, you know what? I'm going I'm to sit them right next to me. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to make them not men anymore. I'm going to go ahead and turn them to God's. Welcome to the television broadcast of Bethel Christian Church with pastors Donald and Dana Hunter. We believe in one true message from one true and living God, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want this message of Jesus Christ to be preached in all of our city, in all of the United States, and in all nations. And we don't just want preaching of words, but we believe in demonstration of power. We welcome you to Bethel Christian Church. Chapter 4, verse 4, where it says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shine unto them. 
will your people the last enemy to be destroyed is death. We are yours. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible talks about it. when death is destroyed, then Jesus will put down all of his power and all of his authority. Join us for this spirit-filled service. Here are pastors Donald and Dana Hunter.